Hello everyone. Welcome to the 11th video of Python tutorial series. In this video, we are going to discuss a very important concept in programming language and that is about functions. Technically speaking, functions are subprograms or code blocks which you can call as and when required. To understand this in a better way, let us assume a situation where you have a report like this. This report has 100 pages. Every page has this kind of header which consists of following lines. Now these three lines you can write for all 100 pages which goes up to 300 lines of code or you can write the same three lines by making a code block or a function in other words which you can call whenever needed. In that case it will look something like this. Let's create a program practically to create and use a function in Python. Let's take an example of printing this header only. To create or define a function in Python we use the DEF that is defining DEF keyword and we give the name of the function. For example, I just want the name of the function to be print header. Then you put pair of parentheses and you have a colon at the end. Why do we use parentheses? That also we are going to understand in few minutes. The moment I press enter as you can see that the editor automatically leaves some space here. In traditional languages we have a block either with curly brackets or with some kind of end statement. But in Python these spaces that is this indentation makes a block. So if I remove this indentation and write the statement let's say somewhere around here then this line will not be part of the function. But we don't want that so we are going to go with the indentation. Now I'm going to write the print statement which is going to display a line. The next print statement I want is it should display the code. I leave some spaces then I say some description and of course the price. Let's also write the similar print statement here at the end. The moment I feel that I want to end this function that means I'm going to remove the indentations. I can press and enter just to separate the rest of the coding from this function. So now the function is defined. We have written the function but then we have to call the function to execute this piece of code. To call the function we don't have to write any special instruction we just say name of the function that is print header. So this is how we call the function. We put parentheses also there is a significance for giving these brackets and we are going to learn that in a quick time. Let's try to run this code now. Now you can observe in the output window that the header is displayed properly. Now let's try the advantage of using or keeping the code in a function. As I mentioned earlier that we can reuse, we can call the function as and when required. Assume that you want to call this function again. So what will you do? You will just give name of the function. So this means you are calling this function two times. So now those three lines are executed two times. So six lines of code now you are calling with just two statements. Of course in this particular example it doesn't make much sense to call the header again and again but when you try to make the report which I have shown you in the beginning that's where it will make some sense. By this example you can make out the usage of the function. There are many more syntaxes we can use with a function. So let's first of all understand few syntaxes and then again we will try 
different examples for each syntax. We can pass a value to the function, a function can return a value as well. All those things now we are going to first understand with a syntax and then we are going to try it practically. So now we begin with a function which takes parameters that is information which we can pass to a function. Let's define a function named sum which is going to take two parameters. I'm defining two variables here. One is variable A and second is variable B. Each parameter is separated by a comma sign. Now we are going to print the value of A plus B. So this function takes two parameters and it displays sum of past parameters. The information we pass to a function is called as parameters. Let's try to call this function. First of all, I'm going to say sum 5 comma 6. Next time, I'm going to say 4 comma 5. So here we are calling the function two times. Every time we are passing different values. Let's save this code and see what is the output. As you can see, the first time when the function is called, the output is 11 and the next time it is 9. So you can call this function as many times as you want. Every time you call the function with its name, that is sum, and you put brackets here. Inside these brackets, you can pass different values. These values are passed as parameters. So in the first call on line number 4, 5 goes to A, 6 goes to B, and then it displays A plus B. Next time you call on line number 5, some function with different values. So 4 goes to A and 5 goes to B, and that displays the sum of these two numbers. In this case, some function takes two parameters. We can pass more parameters also. Let's say if the function is going to take three parameters, you can put a comma and add one more variable here. In this very same code, the function is displaying the value. We can create a function which can return a value at the place from where it is called. Let's say the value 11 is displayed on the screen. Instead, you want the value here. On line number 4, you want the value of A plus B. In such case, you will have to return the value from this function. To return a value, Python gives you a statement called return and what you want to return. So right now we want to return A plus B. Once the value is returned from a function, you can take that value. Let's say I'm taking the returned value in variable called answer. And we try to display value of answer here. I'm just going to comment this line for the moment. We try to run this code and see what is the output. Again, the output is same, but now the execution is little different. The function sum now returns a value and that value is returned in a variable called answer and that we are displaying. So passing parameter is one thing. Sometimes you may not want the returned value. In such cases, you do not need a return statement. But in case, if you want that function has some process return inside and at the end, after processing various lines, there is one value that a function should return, then you can use the return statement and you can take that returned value here in a separate variable. Instead of this, I can also write this way. Let's say I want to print now sum 4 comma 5 this line is going to call the sum function the value will be returned and that will go to the console that is the output so here even though we have not taken any variable this program will run absolutely fine and you will see two values answer displays 11 and the next statement that is line number 6 here which prints sum 4 comma 5 so the function is called with values 4 and 5 respectively that is returned and returned value is displayed on the screen. 
we can return any type of value from a function. It can return a number, string, an array, a collection of values or object. We will learn about arrays, collections and objects in forthcoming sessions. At the moment, we just try to change this function with a string value which is getting returned. So, for example, I want to create a function called full name. This function, let's say, takes two string values, first name and last name. And at the end, it is going to return the full name and last name with a space in between. So the definition of this function is like this. This function will take two parameters, right? Every parameter we have here fn, then I'm joining it with a space because I want that the two strings I pass here that should return me a full name. Let's try to call this function. I'm going to say full underscore name. That's the function name. The first string I'm passing is Nirmal. The second string I'm passing is Joshi. Now, because this function is returning a string, what I can do, I can either take a variable called, let's say, full name. And then I will display the value of full name. Let's save this and we try to run the same code. Now, as you can see in the output, there is a value getting returned by the full name function and that returns one string, the entire string that is Nirmal. Then there is a space in between and the surname that is the last name. So this is how we are passing two strings in fact here and we are getting one string at a time when the function is called. We can improvise the same code where instead of passing fixed values, we ask user to enter the first name and last name. Let's try that also. So I take two variables. I have first name. There I'm going to say input enter first name. Then I'm going to take another variable where I'm going to use the input statement and I'll say enter last name. Now when this function is called, I'm going to print the function itself where I'm going to pass f name and l name here. Let's try to save this and we run this code. So now it is asking for a value. Here I'm going to say Nirmal, that's the first value I have entered. The second value it is asking, so I'm going to say the surname. Let's run this again. There was an issue. So again, I'm going to say Nirmal and Joshi. So now we have the full name getting printed on the screen. So instead of passing fixed values, we are going to ask values from the user and then we call the function where we pass the information. In short, function is a code block or a sub-program which can be called as and when required. Function helps you divide large code in small logical divisions or pieces. You also create a function so that you can reuse that piece of code. So code is written once and can be used many times. This reduces coding efforts as well.